who Australia's longest serving Prime Minister and probably the, the deepest intellectual leader, certainly since the Second World War. Uh, not the only one, but you know, a very deep thinker. He was not a religious man, but he had a religious tradition in his education, I suppose you'd say. And he said that democracy is not so much a machine as a spirit in which, mm -hmm. despite our different abilities and our different positions in society, we all have a responsibility to acknowledge that all souls are equal in the eyes of heaven. That's right. where that idea right. comes from. So a higher authority is saying, you know, you and I might disagree, but I can't lord it over you because somebody else is, you're just... Right, as even as if I. I have the ability to. Yeah, that's right. And what we're now reduced to, I think it's really important to understand this, you hear this bleeding that, oh, yes, we've got to recognise that everybody's important, that everybody has dignity and worth. Well, on what basis, which is your question, if you'd strip out, this, uh, out, out the idea right. of the Godhead, of a higher authority, on what basis? Because he, you run into trouble straight away. The, 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 the most common reason now given would be to say, well, human beings have either high intelligence or um, they are... Uh, they have a sense of morality or both. Those, both arguments are used, usually together. Therefore, they're unique. Therefore, they're special. Mm -hmm. But the problem, you've just alluded to the problem. Some are brighter, mm -hmm. some are less bright. Mm -hmm. Some are stupid, some are wise. Some behave well, some don't. So immediately, you're in trouble because you can't say they all matter equally. Mm -hmm. you, you've lost a model. So the, the Wilberforce one is example. It, it's, in the context of Black Lives Matters, I've thought about this a lot. Because I abhor racism. I think it's the most appalling doctrine because I'm deeply imbued with a Christian view that whether I like somebody else or not is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else says they matter as much as me. You know, the constituent who attacked me on the brack streets of my... And it happened a few times, sometimes on racial grounds, you know, where I was attacked for my race. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop and say, don't respond in kind. This person matters just as much as I do. I might be the deputy prime minister of the country, but our higher authority is just as worried about him and places just as much value on him and his life as he does on mine. Mm -hmm. And that's genuinely where I happen to come from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now, okay, so every empire we know of has kept slaves and there are 45 million estimated slaves today, so it hasn't gone away. But only one empire having kept slaves then moved from within to abolish it. And so the very empire we seem to most want to hate most now of all, it's the British Empire. And so you had this evil slave trade known as the Triangle. Ships would go out to the west coast of Africa. They would buy slaves who'd been rounded up by Africans themselves. They'd gone into the inland, slaughtered the weak and the infirm. Pretty brutal stuff. Mm -hmm. And the infants and what have you, marched the able-bodied ones that could be sold for a few trinkets back to the coast. They're sold to people in this reprehensible trade, taken to the East Indies. The, the, the way they were packed into the ships, and it was just absolutely inhumane mind-bogglingly inhumane. And, you know, there were times when they were thrown overboard so that they could just alive to drown so that ship owners could and trade, same slave traders wanted to pick up on the insurance. And what a way to, you know, the, the, the depravity that we're capable of slipping into. Mm -hmm. And then they'd, they'd sail home with cargo or whatever from the... Right, well, the, and we sure. need to point out that that's par for the course, right? That's just straight historical reality. That was also the case with the Roman Empire and with the Greeks, and you can trace slavery back as far as you want. Every, every empire. Right, right. right. So that's this, the is, point. This, is, this is the classic human condition, and yeah. that's the condition in some sense yeah. of might makes right. Yeah. So, so, okay. so, so what, yeah. what happens in Britain... Uh, you know, after the Protestant Reformation, no, no, it had predated that. To be fair, Rome was pretty good on calling it out too. They just never had it. Although they often had power, they didn't seem to have much power in that area, particularly in terms of what some of the European countries did in South America. Mm -hmm. But in Britain, you had the rise of a deeply uneasy conscience about this. You had a slave trader himself called Newton who wrote Amazing Grace, the famous hymn. Uh, he was engaged in the slave trade at one stage. He was himself enslaved by a black African queen and made to be a slave to her slaves. This is not a one-way street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And along, uh, uh, Newton is influential in the life of William Wilberforce. And William Wilberforce, uh, who is unbelievably privileged, he inherits a fortune, four or five hundred million in today's money, He's seen as, uh, you know, a young uh, gadfly, really. He, he goes to Oxford, does no work, just entertains everybody because he can sing and he's got money, so he's always got a pie 
in his uh, office for the others to enjoy and they booze their way alive. Uh, you know, it was all pretty rough stuff. He goes to London and with Pitt the Younger is elected to Parliament at a very early age. They become friends. He's seen as a future Prime Minister. He goes off on a tour of Europe with the most brilliant mathematician of the age, a man called Isaac uh, Milner. Uh, and as they're going along, and he, he's tiny and Milner's huge and the buggy's right over on an angle. They're deep in philosophical conversation. And Wilberforce decides that he actually thinks Christianity is true. So he goes back to England and says, I've got to leave the parliament. That's a dirty place to be involved. I, you know, it's not for good people like me now. But before I do, I'll go and talk to Newton because he'd known Newton when he was younger. And Newton, the ex-slave trader, says, no, stay in the parliament. Fight slavery. Commit your life to getting rid of this evil. Well, he did. And he teamed up with some remarkable women in the day. Remarkable women. Hannah Moore, one of the most gifted drama people of her time, communicator, educator. The Thorntons, who were the wealthiest families in, uh, family in Europe, banking family, in the world, in other words. They resourced it. And terribly inconvenient, but you had a bunch of white, privileged Christians led by William Wilberforce. Mm -hmm. They abolished slavery. The trade first and then slavery itself. Horrendously, they forked out so much money that it impacted the debt of Britain for a long time when they ended, uh, when they actually banned slavery, because they compensated the slave owners, mm -hmm. including the mm -hmm. Church of England. I'm ashamed to say, mm -hmm. well, that's how bad that trade was. They didn't actually compensate the slaves themselves; right, they'd been right, set free right. by the owners. Now, more than that. Well, so so why do you? So well, here's a question, and it's worth it's worth delving into. So. Obviously, Wilberforce was off arguing from, at least to begin with, something approximating a minority position. Yeah, very but much his so. Words, but his words didn't fall on deaf ears, right? No. He was able to elicit yep. an echo of conscience in the people that he was speaking yes. to. Well, so to yep. me, the, yep. the consequence of that is, yeah. or the, the reason for that, is that by that time, the notion that all human beings were made in the image of God had permeated the... English narrative conscience consciousness enough so that when the, when what that meant was made explicit by someone like Wilberforce and people were being called on their hypocrisy, their own conscience yeah. echoed the claim. Yep, yeah. But there's another aspect to it that's really interesting. Oh, just to finish on what Britain then did yeah. is to try to end it everywhere else, and right. so they sent the most powerful navy in the world to free you know to stop slavery on the high seas, and. A lot of white sailors died. Were they racist because they were white males? No, right. dying to end black slavery. So this is much more nuanced. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this idea of calling out one race against another for all the evils of the world, is it does not stack up for a moment. Now, to come back to your question, because it's germane to that, mm -hmm. I reckon it would be fair to say that it did start to fall on fertile ears, but the shocking part of it was that he was saying, it's not just we white Europeans who are human beings who need to be valued. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's saying that these people who are regarded as less than human, the Africans, were also fully human. And the famous text is from Galatians, uh, for we're no longer slave and free, we're no longer Gentile or Jew, we're no longer man and woman, we're all one in Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. all equal value. Mm -hmm. God doesn't discriminate, loves each of his creations. Mm -hmm. and, and, and loathes it when they're violent to one another. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's what he took out of it. He went away and studied. He wrote a book. You can still get a modern translation of it called Real Christianity. And the subtitle is The Difference Between What People Think It Is mm -hmm. and What It Really Is. Mm -hmm. And that was very interesting in itself. And one of his great supporters was Josiah Wedgwood, the pottery maker. And he struck what is regarded by a lot of people, historians, as the first political slogan, a brilliant piece of pottery, incredibly intricate bas relief, I think that's the word you use mm -hmm, for it, mm -hmm. of, a, of an African man looking up pleadingly. It's incredibly lifelike, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. piece of work. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's white on, a, on that Wedgwood blue background. And the, and the thing underneath it is not, am I not a man and a brother? Mm -hmm, right. Now this is really radical stuff, but it's fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. And Churchill said when a culture stops talking about its history to its children, the story of its beliefs and its heroes, it's saying they're null and void and young people don't have a sense of place 
and they thus opened a Karl Marxist dictum that a people that don't know their history are easily persuaded. Yes. We don't know any of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I what a hero is Wilberforce. This mm-hmm. guy could have had the life of Riley, could have been Prime Minister, got his hands on those levers of power, mm-hmm. but he dedicated his life... Successfully. ..as a very wealthy man, a very privileged man, to people who were not regarded as full members of the human family. Right, right. Okay. Well, I think Why would you British, not be inspired by that? slavery for, what, 175 years on the high seas, if I remember correctly. Sorry? So, the British fought slavery for 175 years well, on the Well, they were still seas. fighting it. Mm-hmm. Well, right. You know, I mean, we, did, we thought it had gone in Australia. The Australian Federal Police were called to a house in 1975 in the suburbs of Sydney because there was a story going around there that was a brothel that had slaves in it. The police mm-hmm. said, no, 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 that's no slavery in Australia. And they turned up there. They'd been told there were 20, but there were 23. Mm-hmm. It was true. Mm-hmm. And we started to realise, and we had to pass laws because there was no laws against slavery in Australia. 